Hello, everyone on the live stream and welcome. My name is Yusef Sievers, and I have the pleasure of uh, being a director in this year's Trans Plays of Remembrance Festival. Um, but I want to invite you to enjoy Friday night in the Trans Plays of Remembrance Festival. Um, tonight, you will be seeing two pieces. Um, first will be Wa Africa, one, two, three, a queerly scripted tragic African fantasia by Nick Mwaluko. And second, I'll introduce in just a little while. Um, I briefly want to say that I'm coming to you from the unseated lands of the Chumash and Amuwu peoples. Um, and I hope that we are all doing what we need to do in order to maintain relationships and in order to better take care of the land that we are all now on. Um, so I hope you sit back, relax. There will be a brief talk back afterwards with some of the artists that you will see very shortly. Um, please prepare any questions that you may have or things that excited you or things that uh, made you question. Uh, bring all of those things forward into the comments section. And if you know uh, where you are coming from or where you're tuning in from, please feel free to put those in the chat section as well. And we'll be sure to shout those out. Um, so. That's all for me. I'm going to turn my camera off now. And the next piece that you will see will be Wa Africa, one, two, three, a queerly scripted tragic African Fantasia by Nick Mwaluko. Scene, sexing while trans, queer, African and black. Owino and Bobby in their first sexual encounter together. <clears throat> Is this your first time? with a woman, I mean. Uh, <sighs> any woman, um, have you ever, um... Uh, oh, 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 oh. Nervous, are you? Because your breathing is, it is, T talk to me. Don't look at me, not while I say this to you, Bobby, okay? Oh, oh. Whenever I uh, masturbate, I mean, when I touch myself, while I dream of fucking you, I'm me and I'm, I'm not me. I'm a man, maybe sort of, I, I don't know the right word, but when I dream, I dream, I fuck you the way my father would. Mask, face, soul. I've never told, not anyone. You're my first. You're my first, Bobby, it's true. I, so I need to show you how to read my body so you can unmask me. Okay, what do you see here? Breast? I see. No, my chest. This, say it. I see your chest. And this is my penis. 
you don't have to do this. It doesn't make you... Remember you told me once that you think you're a coward or less than, that they made you internalize some gender inferiority bullshit? But, but listen to me, Owino. Nothing in my eyes, nothing- Okay, say it or I won't take off my clothes during sex. Ashe, I swear on my ancestors, I will not. Alino, if I struggle, it's because I- uh, Please. But I'm trying to- Bobby. Look at personally, I self-identify as a lesbian. It's a struggle for me to refer to male body parts during sex because I just- Okay, feel but I need, say it, Bobby, please. I, I see your penis, Alino. It's big and beautiful. Are you lying to me? Okay, and, um, and this is my penis too. And this is my penis. And this is my penis too. And because they are all of my penis, they can never hurt you or rape you or make you feel any less or not full or not whole or whatever you don't want to feel, okay? Because you are a woman, my man body can't, my man body won't let you be disrespected or feel small. I promise, never. Do you understand me? I mean, what I'm asking is, do you understand all of me? Please say yes. I want to. But do you? I do. Until now, I did not believe I could show my full me to anyone. Until now, I did not believe if I show my man body, full me, that I would still be loved. But now is different. Now I believe I can exist because of you, Bobby. Because of you, I exist. I believe. Thank you so much. So do you believe I am who I am not when I am who I am? <laughs> I do. Absolutely. Well, how does it feel as witness to see all of me? Scene. The audacity to call that love. One more space. A quick change of atmosphere. Wino goes to table, turns on radio. He adjusts the station. Light, romantic African music is playing. Come. Um. Bobby gets up, literally collapsing into her arms. They sway very slowly, gently. Listen. The pulse, Bobby. The beat. Kara, 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 kara drums. It goes straight to my legs. <laughs> like my moves. Nice, eh? <laughs> now check this out. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> mm. Is this the national radio station? 
sweet, right? <laughs> My dancing, eh? Well, that's why you're laughing, right? What's this song about? Awino whispers something in Bobby's ear. Really? On national radio? Nah. <laughs> really? Liar. Awino whispers something else in Bobby's ear. No way! Never on national radio. Think I'm dumb. You're beautiful. That's what I think. <laughs> Awino kisses Bobby. This is where you belong, Bobby, in our space. The radio crackles with static. Ah. What is it? Stupid radio. Maybe the batteries are low. No matter how much you spend on batteries, the guy at the kiosk always robs from you, pinching a shilling here or there to empty pockets. Awino walks over to the radio table, lifts it up, opens the back where the batteries are stored. He takes the batteries out, music stops. He wipes the battery clean with the corner of your shirt. Maybe they're sweaty. Awino blows on the batteries, then reinserts them back into the radio. Music resumes. They kiss, dance, and static crackle from the radio again. And now what is it? Awino walks over to the table again, lifts the radio, shakes it, puts it back down on the table. Music resumes. Suddenly, music stops. <clears throat> Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, KBC. We interrupt our regularly scheduled music program for a brief news bulletin. His Excellency, our most esteemed leader, President Daniel Arap Mwai, issued the first of a series of fiery speeches condemning the recently formed Kenya Gay Lesbian Queer Alliance, Umoja Wa Wasinge. In his remarks, the president said, quote, I will use everything in my power as Supreme Commander and Chief of the Armed Forces to crush this ridiculous crusade for homosexual rights. His Excellency, the president, went on to say, I personally sanction fellow Kenyans and all Africans to do whatever is necessary by whatever means necessary to root out deviant, perverse, extremely sick behavior from our national soil. This will make you a true citizen, a true patriot. This, my people, will make Kenya great again. End of quote. Umoja wa Wasinge, a Kalantine organization claiming social justice for all, won national attention a week ago. Today, when its leaders, two Kenyan men, were arrested for kissing in a local park. Their case sparked a recent wave of violent protests throughout the country that is raging into more rural areas. Both men remain on trial for the death penalty. Meanwhile, fighting continues to escalate in response to the president's inflammatory remarks. And now, on to sports. Awino pulls violently away from Bobby. What the fuck is wrong? Touch me again. And I swear I'll beat the shit out of you on the only God I know. What? There's no time we... Listen to me. Listen. We... Put the clothes inside the... Are you listening to me? Listen. Get the suitcases from under. Tell me where we're going first and I'll... Just pack. I am. I am packing our... <laughs> they pack together in silence. Will you listen to me, please? Sweetie, you and I, we both have to think of a plan for us to be able to pick up and just leave. What, eh? What are you? I, 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 can't, I can't do this by myself. Where do, you, where do you want us to go, go without? Is this your country? Is this your country, huh? Is it? I didn't think so. Can you, do you know how they will react to us? Lesbians, deviants, faggots, queers. But what about, what, what in the hell can we do if we don't have any money? Do you know anything? 
No. So shut that stupid, big American mouth of yours, take the rest of the clothes and put them inside of the suitcases. Bobby doesn't move. Owino walks over and literally shakes Bobby. Do you know anything? No. What do you want me to say? That I am scared? Here, I am terrified. When they come, Bobby, and they are coming, that'll be it. We'll be arrested. I'll be put in prison, though. They'll, they'll put electricity here. No more me, no more you, no more us. And believe me, they are on their way. So either you help me pack or I, I'll do it myself because I couldn't care less what you decide at this point. Listen to me, listen. What? We, we up and leave this house, where are we going? Who, who will house us? Nobody. We're the sick, contaminated, deviant, toxic, lesbian queers, remember? And we're broke. We're so broke, it's not even an option to... All I'm saying is... You say you say you. You, you, you. Who are you? And what are you doing here in this village, really? Today morning, I told you this would happen, didn't I? First thing through that door. What was I saying, eh, Bobby? What did I say? We are going to die, they will kill us. But what did you say, huh? There is no they, are we know? Who is they? Only personal truth. <laughs> Big ideas. And me being the stupid, foolish, dumb idiot that I am. I ignore everything I know about my own people, my own culture, and believe in what you say. You think I'm stupid, huh? Think because I'm quiet, don't say a word, just sit there watching that I'm that African fool you can seduce, can manipulate, huh? Like puppetry, is that right? You are an American with a passport. What a passport! You will leave me here in a minute with you say, you say. Fly back on to the airport, to the United States, never mention my name nor what happened here ever again. That is your plan, right? So you listen and you listen good. I know, I know you are nothing but death to me, you stupid American privileged rich whore. That's what I say. Owino resumes packing. Bobby takes a moment. I will never leave you. I will never, ever. Look at me. I said I won't ever. Sorry. I didn't mean to say I. Or, or suggest that I'm centering my experience. We are going through this. You and me, together, oh, we know. But baby, please, please don't ignore me. If we look at the larger picture here, we leave this house to go where? To whom without two cents in our pockets? Look, we get the check first thing tomorrow morning. One of us should stay to collect the money. And so you do want to leave me. Fine, you stay. Collect the check if that makes more sense. Okay, that will kill you. They will bust through that door and they will- Oh, ah, stop fucking. The situation is bad enough as is. Calm down. Use your smarts for a second. Just. They will not kill me. I'm an American. I worked for the Peace Corps, so we know. They so much as touch me, there will be a media frenzy so big, every news station in the United States, plus Kenya, plus the international. What happens to me? 
you're not going to like what I'm going to say to you. What happens to me? Go to your father. Yes, Sue. Mungu, Mungu, what have I been saying all day? What has the radio been saying, eh? This is beyond chief and child. Nothing is beyond, beyond chief and child. But sometimes your stupidity is so... Yeah, think I'm stupid. Th think I have no clue what I'm saying. We've run, how far do you think we get? How far before they find us out as the contaminated deviant lesbos? It's splattered all over the national radio. Everyone is listening and talking. Tomorrow's paper's uh, uh, headline is already a given. So it's not a question of if. It's a question of when and how. Today? Tomorrow? Half an hour from now? But they will find us. They will definitely find us. That's why I'm saying to go straight to your father for protection. Shut up! Better you tell him the truth no. than tell him, uh, stop. tell him about stop. the absolute freedom. Stop, about stop, 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 stop. How you found the purity of your very own personal truth. Oh, how it's, it's, it's behind your friends or your family or your village. Customs. No, laws, you don't customs, know how much you are. Your ancestors. It's it's vital. It is larger than your fear, Owino. It's so vital. It is larger than yourself. Anything and everything that's ever kept you down or away from discovering who you really are, what you really need, what you want, what Just you stop. believe in. That's stop. What it is. stop, 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 Your truth. stop. Stop. Stop him how sacred Stop. it is to you. Stop. Stop what? Stop translating my culture to me and come. Don't you see, baby? What? It's impossible for us to go anywhere. No. If we live this second, Bobby, we can protect truth. We can preserve our love. <laughs> Love, <laughs> you have the audacity to call what we have love. We sneak around corners, living like shadows. None of your friends come to visit you anymore because of the way you look. You can't get a job. One of the only people in this village, fluent in Swahili and English, two, count them, two difficult languages. You've gone to high school. Your dad is Kenyan royalty, a true chief. But you're unemployed. For how long now? Because you look too much like a masculine woman slash female boy to stand behind a shitty counter and sell pennies worth of cigarettes. Is that the love you're asking me to protect? Is it worth my life? Our lies lived in complete fear, spinning lie after lie, packs of lies to everyone in our community, from family to neighbors to ourselves. <laughs> we have to lie to ourselves every single day, just so we don't go too crazy all in the name of love you want me to protect, right? I mean, once, just once. I'd like to walk out, talk to someone in our village about our relationship, instead of wasting millions calling the states for a simple conversation on the phone. Is that the love you're talking about? Look at point to one, just one sex positive space in our home, huh? Space where we celebrate the uniqueness of who we are, what we share together together. Pointing to the picture of the smiling presidents on the back wall. 
But look it. There's no picture of you on the wall. No. <laughs> God forbid my lover be on the wall in our home where we live. Oh, no. <laughs> Instead, we have three stupid, heterosexual, cisgender, patriarchal men hanging over my bed. Flexing like African presidents, like strongmen, dictators. Saying, in fact, <laughs> demanding people kill African queers to be true patriots. See how they're grinning? Who in the fuck do you think they're laughing at, Awino? In this fucked up, secluded, tiny, shitty... Speaks directly to the picture of the smiling presidents. I was out and proud and free. Black woman. But now I'm back in the closet, back inside the freaking. Oh! In her frustration, Barbie marches to the cupboard, takes a pot of water from underneath. She throws the water, then the pot, at the picture of the smiling presidents. This is considered an act of high treason, meaning if caught, they would be executed. The pitcher liquidates to the ground. Owino is utterly, utterly shocked at this blatant, open transgression. They both stand perfectly still. Holding you, holding us tight, loving on you. Baby, I know. I know how much you're terrified. I can feel your fear. It's screaming from your insides. You're scared like hell you could lose another parent, not to death this time, but abandonment, which feels worse. Trust me. I know how wounding it is to be erased, denied, to be shut out in exile by the person you love the most. Pain piercing past heart to your core, touching even screaming in places you've been told are unlovable, unwanted, unreachable forever. Worthy of nothing but screams, howls that turn into numbness. I know what that's like. Believe me. But I swear to you, Alino, your father he will not, he cannot abandon you. He will never, ever, ever deny you. It's okay to be seen. It's okay to not make yourself invisible. You have the right to center your truth, to give yourself permission, permission to scream back at a world that constantly, nonstop keeps screaming at you. Why? Because you're you. Owino pulls away to resume packing. How long were we supposed to live inside their closet? How, how long did you think we could stay invisible? Hmm? How long were you supposed to, how long were we supposed to keep lying to ourselves? How long were we supposed to make ourselves absolutely nothing on every level imaginable and call that love? I mean, Queer love is a verb. It comes with risk, with pride, with, with utter audacity. Fiercely fearless. Abandoned, and, and yeah, there's always a threat to your life. But queer love goes beyond courage. It's about taking real risk. 
even as the world erases us, queer love shows us despite that world, because of that world. But what we have here in our relationship is a threesome between you and me and oppression. I mean, what does love mean to you? I'm asking. It's a serious question, Owino. Bobby, I don't want to die. You won't. I promise. Suddenly there's a knocking and then a hard pounding at the door. Who? Quickly they all dim the lights. Who is it? End of play. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hands, claps. I mean, we can't hear you all, so y'all can clap. Yay. Um, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, we're going to keep it rolling and move forward with our um, second uh, piece that we're going to be showing this evening um, called Entitled Bananas, which is a pre recorded performance written and performed by Kezia Walters. Yeah. Yeah, Derek over here. Talking about some he got a little girlfriend. I feel like his daddy putting that stuff in his head. Yeah, because he had no girlfriend. He is all eight years old. He just barely stopped eating the bed last year. You know, I'm putting the seasons and stuff back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta cook this morning. Grits, eggs, some beans. Mm -hmm. You don't need pork anymore. And I don't put salt on it. Mm -hmm. enough. Some natural seasoning. Some lemon pepper. Why? Because we don't need salt in this house. I keep on telling him that. We do not need salt in this house. But he wanted to be over here with no salt and everything. And I did the salt. I put it in the back. Mm -hmm. I saw that little Nas video. Mm -hmm. Girl, she only mad because she can't slide on the road anymore. Because you know she was a pole dancer. She was on the pole. She was stripping. And that's how she paid her way through the college. And I say she did. You got to do what you got to do. When, when I'm in, when I was over here, um, I was over here doing what I got to do. When I was in nursing school, should not been. I got all in the refrigerator, Laura. Mm -hmm. I'm over here talking to you about the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I told you that. There ain't nothing but eight years old. He just got me in the bed. And he wanted to come over here talking about something. He got a girlfriend. A girlfriend. <laughs> And his daddy is over here encouraging that. That is not cute. He is not over enough to have a girlfriend. Uh-huh. 
that's not cute to me. I don't know. I said, you should have a girl. You should have a girl and you try that and you have a girl, bro. And you cute man. You're not a woman. Ain't I a woman? Ain't I a man? I'm sorry, that's not right. Can I take it again? Ain't I a man? I'm, I'm sorry, can I take that one more time? I, I realized I wasn't being a man. <clears throat> Am not I a man? 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 Am not. Ain't I a Kindle? Ain't I non binary? I mean, I'm clearly painting my nails maker. I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm liberal. Yo, what the fuck? Yo, fuck. Bruh, have you ever looked in the mirror to see your mom, bro? Fuck. I see my mom. That shit's, that shit weird as fuck. The fuck? Oh, shit. Bitch, I'm high as fuck. I see my mom. I see my mom, bro. Yo. No. I see my mom, bro. Yo, bro. When I was little, I asked my mom a couple as a while. Could I get a banana? And she was like, nah, they're not right. So, Ma, could I get a banana? So, nah, they're not right. I looked at my mom. I said, but I'm a man. I got whatever I want. Yo. I'm not a man. My mom. We don't want those bananas though. Hello, hello, fantastic. Um, first, I would like to um, correct the pronunciation of the playwright and performer in that last piece. And it is Kiziaya, Kiziaya. Um, so wonderful. Um, so I would love for everyone who's, who's gonna be joining us for the talk back to uh, go ahead and turn your cameras on uh, and we can just get this conversation started. Hi. Hello. Oh, say that again. Oh, hello. Oh, there you are. I can hear you. <laughs> How are you, Kit? I'm well. Thanks for asking. How are you, Yusa? Fantastic. Fantastic. Good to um, hear. Yes. Troy, if you're joining us, you'd better turn your camera back on. Oh, okay, I thought it was just the playwrights. Hi. <laughs> if you're still here, feel free to turn your camera back on. Great. 
So um, to go ahead and get this started, I'd love for everyone to just go ahead and introduce themselves and uh, say your name, pronouns, if you're comfortable, uh, where you are, the role you might have just played, or the, what you do in, in the rest of your life kit for those folks who don't know you. But I'd love to just go around. We'll start with the actors, and then Kit can close us out. Just do some introductions, yeah? Fantastic. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Janae LaShawn. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I decided to go ahead and cut Troy in line and go first because I'm actually going to peace out here. But this has been an amazing experience to be able to play Bobby um, in this festival. And in my regular life, I'm a theater practitioner. Um, I'm fresh out is like how I like to describe being graduated from grad school with the MFA in acting. Um, I recently directed Blood at the Root at Eastern Illinois University. And so, yeah, your girl is just out here trying to make that art that is meaningful and impacts our communities um, and the world overall. Please be looking out for me. Um, the top of next year, I'll be directing Blacks and Fats by Kevin Wren. Uh, it's a new work and that will be at Kalamazoo College. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for this opportunity. I can't wait to see the discussion um, and I'm going to peace out. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, before you leave, Janae, uh, so good working with you. Amazing job and good luck with everything. Thank you, Troy. We'll be in touch. And <laughs> it was a pleasure working with you as well. I don't be in touch with all y'all. So, you know, don't don't think it's weird. I am in touch. <laughs> <laughs> um. Cool, so I'll go next. Uh, my name is Troy Rocket, he, they pronouns. I'm over and uh, colonially known as, you know, California, Oakland, California, on the Muwekme Ohlone people, the land of the Muwekme Ohlone people. And I'm out here, I'm a playwright and an actor in the Bay. And um, I loved working on this piece. Hello, everybody. My name is Kit Fenrir Emery. My pronouns are they and or she. And I attended the plays last year and I was invited to come back and talk back with you all. So I'm just so excited to be able to hold space with you in my everyday to day life. I am both a restorative and transformative justice practitioner, a global instructor, and I help facilitate direct reparations across New England for people who may need it. So I'm just so excited to get started talking. Amazing, amazing. And um, a slightly uh, larger introduction for myself, um, Yusef Sievers. I use he, they pronouns, and I was the director of Wa Africa. And I'm also a movement teacher at a conservatory uh, here in the Central Coast of California. Um, so, First, I would love to just pick both of your brains all day long, first of all, I'll say that. Um, but I'd love to know from either of you, what is vital about uh, trans plays being told and being uh, shared in today? <laughs> uh, that is, I thank you for this question. Um, yeah, I guess it's just a discussion, so it's not a, you know, I feel, um, at least in my community, uh, we just have such a deep well, like, of compassion as trans folks and non-binary folks that coming from that place, writing stories from that place of compassion. And um, I think, yeah, our stories are nuanced, they're lovely. Uh, just like the last one we watched, um, I just, I think it's very important, especially that um, we speak, we share as loud as we can. Um, this is about our dignity, you know, this is, this is about legacies and the continuation of that. So, but yeah, I love this question and whatever the discussion happens, but I'll just start there. I also just Thank you for expanding upon that, Troy. I really appreciate it. I think it's just like a revitalization. It's rejuvenation. It's like changing the biochemistry of our hearts by telling us our stories and also like being able to become visual storytellers and to craft 
art, right? And to be able to just have a larger conversation, but also say, we're here, we're present, and we're doing art. So that's not going to change for a little while. And I think just having that open field to just honestly expand and explore and play with different dynamics and ideas, it's just one of the reasons why um, festivals like these are so, so crucial and important, especially during a pandemic. Absolutely. You both bring up such wonderful things. And when I think about uh, changing narratives or when I think about um, expanding or shifting values, somehow, some way, it's always rooted in the stories we tell. And so the values we have now are because of the stories we learned, whether or not they included all of us or were useful to all of us is uh, to be written. But, <laughs> but what's vital is that we continue to tell stories that amplify the nooks and crannies and all the nuanced portions of life that have been um, strategically or unstrategic, strategically unamplified. And so I, I find that it's so, so vital that we have these spaces where these stories can be told and be heard. And I find Zoom to be quite fantastic in this way because you can have what may be uncouth like responses in your own space. You know what I mean? Like you can have the uncomfortable thing happen and get out of your chair and like run to the bathroom and throw some water on your face, which in most cases in a public setting, you don't, there's not really time to like leave the theater when you feel uncomfortable. And so in our home spaces, it's so beautiful to watch stories like this uh, come to life and come into people's homes and private spaces. Um, I would love to know from either of you, do you have any favorite trans plays of any kind? stories, either your own or someone's you've read? Kit, you first this time. <laughs> I'm going to y'all. take it too long. That, yeah. No, that was, that was a good question. <laughs> I think just hearing the, hearing the stories even today and not being like primed for them, but also like being able to resonate with like the different components and themes of each play has just been like, I feel seed. I feel like I needed this <laughs> TVH. Um, and then even compared to last year's plays, which were also phenomenal. So I think it's just experiencing things that are not within like my local sphere is something that's really, really revitalizing and eye-opening. And I just love the energy. So thank you. Yeah, you Troy, any favorite plays, playwrights? Um, I don't, uh, yeah, it's like kind of, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I just enjoy, I mean, every night I go out, like <laughs> it's a show. So, um, I just, I love people, um, who tell stories and take up space and, um, expand. I want to put some names in the chat though, cause I feel like I can't just say one. So I'm gonna take a moment to type out some names so people can, uh, can go see them. Cause we got a lot, we got a lot. And aren't you writing a play, Troy? Am I making that up? Do you? Oh yeah, yeah, that happens, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you care to share the name of your play or? Yeah, so I have, um, I yeah, it's uh, three plays that all have the themes of transition and belonging. Um, and it is kind of auto fiction me going and talking to three of my loved ones who have passed and I didn't get a chance to come out with them. And so I meet with them. Uh, one play is Bold Fade. And I meet my childhood friend and we just chop it up. Um, conversation with my dad and then a conversation with my granny. And we just talk about all the way, all the things, all the transitions, all that. Um, so it's, it's been a joy to um, be in that writing space and, and have those conversations that I didn't get to say, but I'm saying them now. Um, so those are great. It's fun. Absolutely. And it brings forward the thing that Kit brought up earlier about changing our biochemistry in our hearts when we are able to take a our own stories and say, this is that bit of reverence. Yes, indeed, for what I, for my journey, for my life and in that offering of reverence and change and honesty, folks start to pick it up on the other side. And that's when people leave the space differently or leave uh, the experience with just a little bit more inquisition about their own lives and their own experience. Okay, fantastic. Um, okay, big question, not a big question. 
what does this type of work and artistry look like in the future in terms of uh, non-binary work, uh, trans plays in general? What is that? What is what is your vision of that moving forward? If you could have it all your way. <laughs> I think I would love to see just like more like non-binary and trans youth, especially black youth to just have the creative spaces to be brave and to just be black and be wonderful and like share that collective cohesion. I think that's something that I really hope to see take off in the future. I feel like there's so many different ways and so many different mannerisms and ways that our intersectionalities like impact the way we move throughout the world so to be able to paint a picture accurately of what we envision is really important and I think the more space we are given to do that I think the resonance will be able to increase and amplify as a result always about amplifying that resonance baby I really love, I love that you brought in the youth. Um, I am thinking about just the accessibility or, or just what I've learned through the pandemic. Not that everybody has this, but just connecting across, like just collaborating, connecting across. Um, I've met so many of my siblings this pandemic and it's been great, especially during a moment, a time of isolation. It's been great to expand um, my siblinghood, all of that, uh, it's been very fun. So I think the future, yeah, collaborating um, and just like no genre, just genre, genre, like beyond it, outside of it, new genre. Um, it's, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Absolutely, absolutely. And one last thing I'll say is that it, for me in the near future, it looks like more disruption it looks like more uh, because, you know, before we get to the seed coming out of the ground, we must till the soil. And we have yet to really till this soil. Okay, okay, you know what I'm saying? So I, I find that it to be most exciting that it is it is going to be quite mucky and, and, and messy and a little more blurry and a little more confusing and a lot more, you know, riskier choices, sharper decisions, more risk. I feel like there's much more to be tilled before we actually get the bloom in the fall. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And I feel that this series is also a wonderful way to just continue to move that conversation forward and have people hear conversations happen in which love, compassion, uh, harmony, resonance, and reverence can all exist in the same space. Um, so unless we have any questions from the chat, I'm going to wrap this up. Those were the things that I really wanted to touch upon in this brief time about what's vital, what does it look like moving forward, and the people that we can look to now for the stories that allow us to bring these things light. Yes? Lovely. Fantastic. So for those of you watching the live stream, thanks so much here. <laughs> I appreciate you all being here and watching and celebrating. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Janae. Thank you, uh, Kiziaya, everyone for being a part of today's work and the days prior, all the back channels. Uh, we would not be here without all of you. So thank you all so much and have a fabulous, fabulous Friday. <laughs>